Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm short of time, so no introductions. Let's get right to the uh, point. I'm a technologist. Uh, I work with technology day in, day out in some form or the other. But um, I have gone through my transformations. And these transformations I want to talk about. They're basically three stages in my life. And uh, whether you like it or not, the third transformation is going to affect you horribly. Everyone sitting in this audience, but also all those of you who are watching this on the outside, or will eventually uh, watch it. Transformation one, which I call the clockwork transformation. In transformation one, I was five years old. And at the age of five, my mother comes home one afternoon from shopping, finds me sitting on the uh, carpet in the living room, having successfully used a screwdriver to disassemble a clockwork and uh, you know a grandfather clock that was uh, standing or uh, hanging on the wall uh, I had somehow managed to take it down and completely disassembled so my mother walks in and sees me sitting there grinning happily surrounded by little gears and springs and uh, nuts and bolts and whatever and obviously I mean what does every mother do she ha almost had a fit uh, saying that oh my god how could you do this it just happened that my father was, who was you know traveling between India and Germany a lot uh, comes in and he says, don't. It's a sure sign that our son is going to be an engineer. He was right, because uh, anything that uh, could be disassembled fascinated me. Uh, I will not talk about all the toys, bicycles, and everything else that I could uh, disassemble, basically to figure out how things worked. But let's move on. Uh, somewhere along the way, in the 70s, I came to India, we settled down over here, I went to school, and I went to college, um, pre-university college, and somewhere along the way, I ran into a computer. Now, computers are nasty things. They either, you know, grab you and really take hold of you, or they just uh, reject you completely. In my case, it was the former. And I fell completely in love with uh, computers. I said, this is what I want to do all my life. I don't want to do anything else. And uh, of course, I went ahead and did my engineering and mechanical engineering after that. The important thing is that I got involved more and more um, with the development of software. Uh, but it's not just software. It's overall computer-related uh, products. And, you know, I was really proud of them. Uh, you know, they, they did all these fancy things, and at a push of a button, you know, the, the screen would flash a bit before uh, it would change, and then, you know, sometimes when you pressed a button, it would give a few sounds. Boop, 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 boop. And I was very proud of myself. This was, this was absolutely great. This was the stuff that, you know, the dreams were made up of. Uh, you, you were actually creating something. It was an art form of its own. And then Transformation 2 happened. Transformation 2 happened, which I call the freedom stage, is when I got involved with free and open source software. Free and open source software, for those of you who are not uh, aware of that, and if you're not aware of what free and open source software is, you shouldn't be sitting in this college. But um, uh, the thing was that free and open source software gave me literally the freedom to do things I couldn't do before. It was really expensive. By the time I got uh, to this particular stage, which was the early 90s, uh, I got uh, to a point where, you know, you, anything you wanted to do, you had to pay a license fee, or you had to buy something, or you had to, you know, spend an enormous amount of money. And it was really, really difficult. And uh, then I ran into free and open source software, which was great. And um, somehow along the way, I also got involved with uh, the whole concept of, you know, the, the free, and <coughs> free and open source software community which was even better, because I love communities. Somewhere along the way, I had set up um, a bulletin board service, um, a BBS. Don't know whether you know it's pretty old-fashioned. How it used to happen in the 80s and 90s, um, which was basically a little system where people could dial into. And um, uh, they could dial into what could they do? They could leave messages, they could uh, upload files, they could download files, they could read other people's messages and do all sorts of fancy stuff. What was really great was all the discussion that was going on, and you know, kind of community form. Now, this was the kind of community I re-found when I got involved with the free and open source software yeah, stuff. Great. I just loved it for two reasons. One thing is, it was completely technology-oriented. Technology-oriented meant that, of course, it was my baby. I could, uh, you know, 
play around with the latest and greatest. I could, you know, make something go one millisecond faster. And uh, it was amazing what you could do. And it was amazing what you couldn't do. Now, just to give you a little uh, introspective into this entire thing, in 1981, to what the 1981 to 2006 era is what is commonly known as uh, the PC era. This is because in around 1980, 1981, uh, IBM uh, invented or rather released this device called the IBM PC, which begat clones after clones after clones after clones. And soon, everyone uh, you know, want, who wanted to be in computers had to be have an IBM PC or an IBM PC kind of clone uh, machine sitting in front of him or her, even today. Uh, you go home, you say, I, oh, I'll just switch on the computer. You basically mean a PC, which is, you know, a monitor, a screen, a CPU, box, and a keyboard. And these days, you've got all sorts of other things, like, you know, a DVD drive and network connection and all sorts of stuff. I would call this the era where everything went dead. Because in reality, in that period of time, Nothing really progressed. I realized this, and I often complained about it. I could never put my finger on it. I could never say, this was the problem. So then, <coughs> um, the era changed. And in the past few years, past five years or so, we have been watching the mobile era uh, start. You know, mobile phones, everyone's got a mobile phone. Everyone's got some fancy smartphone or the other. And everyone now starts talking about, oh, you know, the future is going to be, uh, everyone, everyone's going to be running with a mobile phone. And I said, is this what was bugging me, that this was missing? And it turns out it wasn't. What was really bugging me was something completely different. That's the crux of what I'm talking about today. I got a reality check. Now, we are talking about around 2008. 2008-2009. Understand the situation I was in. I had spent years, decades, in fact, uh, uh, you know, working with uh, the technology industry, uh, dealing with people, dealing with tens and thousands of uh, people every year, uh, going around speaking about them, interacting, writing, all sorts. I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew everything there was to know about technology, but I slowly began to realize that there was one thing I didn't know. And it turns out that almost everyone in the IT industry, in the technology industry, doesn't know it either. That is, how on earth do you make people use your product? I watched technology after technology, product after product come out. I created some, I watched other people create them. No one would use those damn things. The same people would buy the latest and the greatest, and after a while the wave would end and that was it. Nothing further would happen. Everything would flatline and nothing would go on. No one was using the technology in ways they should have been used. Now, people like us had put our hearts into this. S the sweat of our bro and you know the works worked really hard in creating these products. No one would use them. And I couldn't figure this out. Somewhere around 2008, this great technologist, really perplexed, comes home from office, sits at home, and is trying to figure out why uh, this particular product, which I was working on at that moment, was some mobile product, wouldn't work. I mean, work in sense worked great, but you know, people weren't really that interested in that. People weren't picking it up, whether it was my product or whether it was someone else's product, uh, you know, who had produced something similar. They were, they were all staying, you know, within the same numbers in terms of distribution. So to figure out what was going on. I decided to bounce a few ideas off uh, someone. And uh, 
I mean, I'm at home now. This is sometime in the evening. Whom do you bounce your ideas off? So I turned around, and my wife was standing there, and I asked her, hey, look, uh, this is a product which I'm working on. Could you use it and tell me, uh, uh, you know, what, what you see is wrong with it? That is something, if you have got a big ego, and if you have got enormous amount of pride in what you do, don't ever do what I have done. Because she took that thing, she used it for a while, I think it was some radio product or something, and she used it for a while, and she said, okay, I'll try and see whatever it is. I gave her a smartphone to use it on. A couple of days later, I said, but uh, I don't see you using it. Oh, yeah, I, well, I tried, and uh, why aren't you using it? Well, to be honest, it's too technical. It is what? We had just spent, me, my team, various other people, lots of discussions across the planet, we had spent time trying to figure out how to make this, you know, uh, this product, this piece of software, you know, really easy to use and user friendly. You know the term user friendly? Heard about that before? It's one of those myths. Uh, there's nothing like user friendly, believe me. Mostly because users are never friendly. <laughs> what they do, what users do, is they don't use your stuff. And that's not a very friendly thing to do to a guy like me. So it turns out that my wife wasn't using this because it was too technical. Now I said, hang on. This was, it wasn't even one of those keyboards, you know, where you, uh, phones with those keyboards where you had to press each key three times to get a letter C and then another one four times to get a letter Z and, uh, or S or whatever. It had a nice little QWERTY keyboard and you could just type uh, whatever you wanted on it. So it wasn't really that hard to use. She still wasn't using it. Why? She is not the kind of person to use that kind of product. I said, okay, I mean, this is so maybe this test was the wrong one. <sighs> I wish I hadn't done that test. What I realized after I sat down and thought about it a bit was that for the past 30 years, people like me had been spending our time catering to the same audiences over and over again. We would create a new product. People within a particular circle would use it, and that was it. It was something like this. You we had no, you know, a limited number of people, a couple of thousand, a couple of hundred thousand, who would use the product, who would buy the product. But then they wouldn't. They would either stop using it, or no one else would buy it, or whatever. We tried to figure, I tried figuring out why are we not able to break that barrier? Why are we not able to go beyond these number of people? Why it's always the same number of people? And I realized that we are basically catering to ourselves. We are building products which are meant for people like us. There's one tiny little problem with that assumption. A really big problem with that, actually, not a tiny problem, it's a huge problem. And that problem is this. That's us. This is the rest of the world. There we are, tech heads, wire heads, and doing all sorts of things, and, you know, marvelous technology, and going beep and boop, and it's flashing lights, and, uh, you know, whatever. And then I sat down and did the math. Last year, by the end of last year, there were roughly about one billion operational computers on the planet. On this planet. I don't know about the rest. You'll have to check with them. But on this planet, one billion PCs, Macs, supercomputers, whatever. This doesn't mean one billion users. This actually means a small fraction of users. A few 
hundreds of millions of users. Now, at this point in time, I believe we are at the six billion or six and a half billion people stage on this planet alone. What about the rest? How do we get to the rest of the people? Why are the rest of the people not using these technology products? And that is where what I would call Transformation 3 happened to me. Transformation 3 turned me, rather not turned me, I had to force myself. It was the most painful transformation I have ever gone through. I had to throw away everything that I knew without forgetting what I knew. And I had to turn myself into this most dismissive kind of person. You know, the kind of person we don't really want to bother about as technology people. You know, users? I had to turn myself into user of the products I was producing. And people like me were producing. You should try this. Try looking at technology as we know it through the eyes of an ordinary user who doesn't care so much about technology and computers, who doesn't care whether it you know, goes 3 gigahertz faster than something else, or whether it's got 5 gigabytes storage, more storage or more RAM, or whether it can you know, do some marvelous things which only a, a computer scientist could possibly understand. They don't care. They just don't care. And this was driven home really hard when I did, took the first step of um, uh, the first step into what I was doing. I stepped into a user's shoes and I watched as the world started switching over and buying computers which were not computers. 15 million more people bought an iPad last year than was predicted. People predicted only about 2 million to 3 million would buy them. Obviously, we have been shooting at the wrong target. We need to look at the concept of how people use things. Simple thing, last idea idea to put in your head. What is the time, ladies and gentlemen? Tell me, what is the time? Right now, what is the time? Do you know what I am seeing here, from here? I am seeing about, how many of us are here? A thousand? Doing this. All of you are looking at your portable, synchronized chrono computers. Chrono computers. You're not. You're not looking at your chrono computers. You're looking at your wristwatches. And unless we get to use technology and create technology that's as usable as a wristwatch and as natural to use as a wristwatch, we aren't going to grow our audiences. Remember this. You are going to go into the world and try to produce products to sell out there. Sell it to people who want to use it. Don't sell it to people who don't want to use computers. Think about it. Because the next billion users, the next billion users, technology users out there, are not going to use computers. Thank you.